beige. <laughs> uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, does, it doesn't matter at all. But it just kind of get helping me to kind of get focused right now. So maybe I'll put in everything that it could sort of introduce be the beige, the titanium white into. But it can go a lot of other places and it will. This is just one way of kind of conquering this, this fear of the white space because it's uh, kind of silly, really. But we all go through that. I'm gonna get a little bit of black paint in here because I kind of like accentuating these little boobies. Although they get, they won't look like that after a while. So it's getting more and more abstract. Still, I know overall that I want to start out with this happy person with these small lines and small shapes in the beginning. I could combine all of this together, but I'm going to get a little bit lost. Maybe I'll start to put in a little white. And now this happy person is kind of being lost to uh, some shapes. You have to, you know, you have to exercise your imagination. But if you can't, it's fine to start out painting a coffee cup and then continue to distort it. What do I like and what I don't like about this? I don't need to think about it yet. This one over here. I might want to lose some of that. And start to really kind of get my orientation, you know, lose stuff up here and kind of keep my business off to the side, which is asymmetrical. And I like the way the gray is being picked up because the black marker is moving. So we've got our, we've got some tones coming on there. So I like that. So this one has a lot of that. So maybe I could get a lot more of that tone there. Maybe what I can start to do is start to reclaim some of these shapes. So rather than be rounded shapes, now I have a shape that has lines in it and I didn't deliberately make a shape with lines in it, like you see there. But what becomes interesting is how they are formed. And if I start to reclaim a shape like this, okay, then what's inside that is that. And it's very free. So I couldn't plan that. If I planned that, I would get in there and I would do, you know, a very organized space. All right, but these kind of free gestures that happen uh, when it's left uh, are fun. And they are demonstrative and it's not the world serious. Because I'm working on four paintings, maybe one of them will turn out good. Maybe they'll all turn out where I like them, but you can keep working anything until you're done. All right, and we're just working with simple colors now. When I look at this now, I think, hmm, you know, I automatically want to go down here and kind of give a little more weight to the bottom and maybe get a little bit more deliberate with that.
it's time to change brushes. This guy over here, he doesn't have a lot of beige going on, so I'm just gonna, oh, in fact, get gray going on now because it's dirty, but I don't care <laughs> because I'm just trying to get myself going. So, I'm on my way to some kind of a weird series but it's not the world serious. See, and these are just ways that, to jumpstart the process and to start thinking about, thinking like an artist. Thinking like an artist has a lot to do with being able to see things. So. I'm going to start putting some marks in here for no particular reason other than uh, these are sort of speaking to me. So uh, I let the painting inform me. It's not a real painting. It's not the world serious. I'm not doing this painting to sell this painting. And I try not to start any of my paintings with the intention of I'm trying to make a piece of art to sell. I just wanna make art. And I would advise you to, to do the same, especially when learning. Don't worry about other people saying, you know, what are you gonna do with, what, why are you doing this and what are you gonna do with it? Um, just do it. Because you enjoy it. You know, this might excite you and you might get out your tools and you might make a lot of junk. But the more you paint, the more you start to become familiar with the what ifs. What if, what if, what if. You're always answering what if. I don't worry about having too much information because that information can always be covered up and then that's history. Literally. <laughs> Maybe over here I'll do some scratching if, it, if it's still scratchable. Scratching is a timing thing. But I'm just having fun. So rather than connect the dots, maybe I just want to sort of connect the shapes with a line. But I'm just playing. Just playing. I'm gonna put a little bit more white in here. I like some of that, some of those lines. You might want to get some more in there. Or pick them up somewhere, like here. So little by little by little, each piece is starting to kind of tell me where it wants to go. And I know that sounds abstract, but you know, now I'm starting to see this and uh, you know, maybe I want this to be about shape and line and checks and what have you, polka dots. Or I could just totally obliterate everything and start all over again. But the reason I call it the power of four is that it's very empowering to not get invested in one particular piece at a time. Because there's a lot of different ways to use a certain palette. There's a lot of different ways to use space. 
uh, and there's a lot of different ways to describe different elements of design. Okay, here I've got a lot of curvilinear stuff that's starting to happen. Did I think about that? No. Standing back and look at it, I can evaluate it. Here I've got kind of a lot of these little bubbles going on. Um, do I like them? Um, she looks like she's drowning there a little bit. Like, oh, help, help. Eee. She's taking a bubble bath. Okay. Um, and this one, I kind, it's kind of honky. I kind of like it. I really don't know why just yet, but I'm going to let it start to dry a little bit. This one, I think, has a lot of potential. Um, I think I want to get some gray and some line and things like that into this one. Um, let's see. Kind of like that. Now that foot has kind of become a, a thingamajigger, you know? So maybe I'm going to let like some of those thingamajiggers become my marks, right? So now I'm not just doing a circle, you know, I, I'm letting this inform me. So I'm kind of, kind of getting a thing going with these thingamajiggers. Now I know that I could get a good thing going on and do one here, 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 one here. But then I start making wallpaper, all right? Just like if I were to do these dots and then that's confusing. So I'm going to, kind of stick to an area and you know maybe I'll let this thingamajigger idea continue right now it looks terrible right I'm gonna wet them a little bit I think I'm glad that it's drying um, so I can put some marks over it, but I think I'm trying to make some really light, light gray, really light. Because that'll just give me a, a little bit more depth in things and something else to play with. And maybe I'll change brushes and use something with a tip like this. Just because it'll force me to do a different kind of mark. If you're getting stuck with your marks, you know, where you're always making circles, 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 or triangles 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 you know try changing your brushes try using your non-dominant hand uh you know there's all kinds of ways to to get away from that um i tend to naturally make circles but every now and then i like to go against the grain so i i kind of do like that um I don't know if I want to speak to it from here. I see it's getting very much away from the Initial happy person, right? And I like to use brushes sometimes that I can't control well because otherwise I will tend to stay inside the lines, which is okay if that's what you want to do. But if you want to do something that looks very organic, then you know, you might want to use something that's a little bit harder to control and that just might have you do something like this that you would never do.
So since there's all these circles in that in this one, I'm thinking I'd like to pick up a little bit on some of that geometry there. So it looks like I'm framing it, but I might start to do some overlapping frames and kind of interrupt that monotony. Again, I don't have a plan, but I'm starting to see that maybe this one's going to be very curvilinear. Maybe this one's going to be more geometric. All right. This one is, is very organic. And this one, I'm really not sure. It has a lot of, well, it looks like it's going down, but I'd like it to go up. So I think with this one, my intention is going to be, you know, direction and upward momentum. So I might want to write that. I might even want to write that on here, upward, so I don't forget what I want to do. Okay, this one I think I'm going to make minimal. I don't want to forget it. You don't have to write it on the painting. This one, um, yeah, I think I kind of want it to be sort of a U-shape design. Um, rather than just vertically upward. So I think I wanted to orient that way. So uh, I might call it U. This one, I think I'm going to make it predominantly geometric so maybe a lot of geometric with a little bit of organic so G and O go and those can become marks too maybe I'll do that Right now, again, I'm still not worrying so much, but I'm getting a little bit more in touch with the intention for each piece. And uh, if I kind of try to stick with that, um, it may end up unifying. But if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I got four shots, right? So one of these bound to turn out, hopefully, uh, into something. And then it's not a waste of time. Um, it's never a waste of time. It's all learning. Okay. So. Since this one is minimal. I might want to just continue and just make some, a little bit of very lyrical line. Uh, and make it more quiet. See, this area is, is more quiet than something like this. This is a noisy painting. This is quiet. All right, it could be a lot of texture. This is a lot of marks. All right, this is more quiet. This one is probably in the middle. So I want to push it one way or the other. This one is very vertical, but some of these are making some horizontal lines. And this is mostly about line, but there's some shapes in it. So, you know, I'm loosely starting to, to think. The reason I like to use uh